So this is Simple Mixer, which is a, um, a, a mixing component for real-time visuals built in Touch Designer. Um, the interface looks a bit like this. So in the interface, in, there's two tabs, there's Show tab and there's Mapping tab. Mapping tab is just a stoner, um, which is not outputting anything right now because I've disabled my output. Um, so I was because I'm in difference mode. Hang on. Uh, so that's um, outputting the mapping, and I can map through there. And then show mode is the main um, the main window for um, controlling things. So Simple Mixer has this section here, which is the mixer. The mixer has uh, four banks, which then go to two composites, uh, which are between these two. So this this uh, bank here and this bank here can be composited together using whichever composite mode. And then this bank here and this bank here can be composited together using whatever. This is the final outcome. And this is the final outcome of this side. Uh, if I drag something else, then you'll see. And then this in the middle is just a crossfader between the two separate banks. So some people I know like to have lots of layers of video um, all on top of each other. I personally don't do this very often. I normally just have one. So you can, if you want to use it for just one visual, then you can just click and drag a clip from here and it will automatically uh, load in. So that's the mixer uh, section. Uh, I'll next go on to this section down here, which is actually the tox bin. Um, and as you can see, I can just drag a, a, a tox file over to here and it will automatically load that into the mixer. Um, so that's all just done um, from a folder, which is the tox folder in the assets folder, which I'll go through in a minute. In a minute. Um, but that is quite simple. Just drag it on and it just, it just goes to whichever bank. You can drag to multiple banks as well. So I can drag to this bank. I could drag one over to that bank um, as long as I have the bank uh, opacity enabled. So this is the opacity of each bank. Uh, if I want it to uh, fade between banks, I can drag it now and it will fade in over this bank fade time. So bank fade time will allow us to do nice slow fades so we don't ever snap content, um, well, uh, tox files into, into the system. They always have a nice slow fade in. So if I just set this back to uh, over mode, there we go. So I now have a, um, a visual in there and that's the tox section. So the next section is uh, this section down here. And this is attached to the tox. So the tox itself will load in whichever uh, I drag over. So if I just drag this example one up here, this is um, the uh, sphere example, which is quite good for seeing how all of this works. And for some reason, there's a bug in the latest experimental build where the parameter window doesn't update. So I'm just going to quickly F1 back in. I'll probably have to put a toggle in there for now just to get rid of that. And then here we have, so we have uh, parameters uh, which come in from the tox file itself. So this tox has a custom parameters page called noisy sphere, and it has two parameters in there which can be adjusted. This tox is also not a base comp, it's a container. And because it's a container, that means that the container itself will show up down here. So if I have a Arcball camera, for example, like here, I can sort of, you know, move around my visual in real time and it will go straight to the output. From that visual. If I wanted, I could have sliders here. I could have some of a weird. Uh, I could have like a Twitter list for doing like live moderation or something like that. Um, I could do. They could have anything here that you want, as long as it's in the tox and it's set up correctly. It will show up here. So this is for the top left visual, which is this visual here. I can also go to the bottom left bank, and the bottom left bank is currently running this, um, except it's not updating because of touch designer. Uh, one second, there we go. Now it's updating. So there we go. So now I can change the color of this and I can change all the parameters in the background whilst I have this on top. And then I can maybe fade to another, another visual or something. And then top right will go to top right and bottom right will go to the bottom right. Um, and they all, they all have blend modes as well. Um, so that's pretty much these sections. There's then this audio analysis in the center. Um, this is a component that Greg built, which allows you to um, just take spect do spectral analysis on audio. You can kind of move this around and get a, a nice part of the audio that you like. Um, and then you can choose 
or if you want to smooth it, if you want to change the gain. Um, the, these three channels are sent out as well. Uh, these are if you want to do like a, a line, an audio sort of uh, line or something like that, then you can you can do that. Uh, and also these channels I've actually exposed here, so I can just drag them straight to uh, something in the scene. So I can just drag that to the the glow amount. That's not really doing much. Uh, let me just go to my top left. I'm just gonna have to go out and in again. If I do it to the amplitude of the sphere, then there we go. We've now got an audio active sphere. We can move around it in real time. Uh, we can pan and do all that kind of thing. And it's going straight to our output. And if I want to turn it back off, I can just go back in. So there's normal, it's just a normal parameter component there. Uh, I can choose my source device in here. Uh, or I can choose to add test music on the remove. This is the uh, default touch designer music. Uh, I can set a monitor device. So if I want to listen to what I'm picking in here, I can actually monitor that and kind of pick those frequencies by ear, uh, which is quite cool. Um, and that's for each spectrum as well in this uh, component. So that's spectrum one, spectrum two, spectrum three. Um, and that's pretty much how the system works. Oh, there's also at the top here this, um, this output monitor. So I've got one and two, so I can choose the monitor to output to. If I have um, four monitors, it'll it'll actually just bring these buttons down and you'll have four here, so you can select whichever. So it'll only show you the monitors that you have available. Um, if I enable output, I can turn that off and on. And this is our final output window. Um, so that's on, this is final output without mapping. Final output with mapping, you'd have to go into the mapper or just look at your output. So that's the general gist of the system. It's actually fairly straightforward. Um, but it's actually kind of quite powerful because you can just drag in your own components and do what you want down here as well. So if I escape out, I'm just gonna go through now. Uh, first of all, I will go through the project uh, folder. So Simple Mixer itself is, uh, it's in Git, so it has Git ignores and readme's and licenses. Uh, it also has the Simple Mixer.tool file, which is the main tool file. Um, this is quite small because most of the stuff lives in this lib folder. And lib will have inside it um, all the different externalized tox files for this project. There's also these Python files, which are the main uh, extensions. So the only Python code that really runs is extensions. Uh, I try to keep as little as possible um, in the uh, parameter executes and so on. The container GUI is Going through, we have all of these different tox files. It shows all, this is the entire structure of the project. So for example, if I go into lib, I can go into base mix, and then here is a Python script. If I go into base mix in here, then the Python script is, is here. So that's following the structure of the, pro, of the uh, project. There's an assets folder, and inside the assets folder are just whatever folders you want. Um, and the most important one being this tox folder which just holds different modules that can be loaded in. So in the network itself, we have, if we go to the very beginning, uh, first of all, we have the, the mixer and the tox um, components. The tox component brings in any of the tox files. So I go inside base tox, we have a folder, that, which is picking the tox files, a replicator, which is basically just replicating this tox file here, and that has an external tox, uh, which is referenced from that folder. So it just loads in all the toxes in that folder automatically. If you don't want the tox to load in, just don't put it in the folder. Um, it's as simple as that. So if I go inside tox one, you'll see that actually this is just now my visual that I created earlier on. So when you're creating a visual for Simple Mixer, there's a few rules. Uh, the first rule, is out one is always the visual that will go to the mixer. So your, your visual must have an out one. Thumb is for visual reference, which is what it uses in the bottom left down here to pre -vis so you know what you're loading. Uh, I've just used a fit and set mine to 160 by 90. Uh, it could be smaller if you want to save memory, but to be honest, it's not using a lot. Uh, and I've locked, uh, I've just locked that and called it thumb. It has to be called thumb to be loaded in. So you have to have an out one, 
and you have to have a thumb. I think that's the bare minimum. Um, if you want to render to your output resolution, you can use op.output.parw and that will automatically um, set the resolution to whatever the monitor is. So that's what I'm doing here. Everything is set to the monitor's resolution or the projector or whatever I'm outputting to. So that's the basics of this one. That's a base. This one's actually a base comp and it has some custom parameters and they're the ones that get fed back to the, uh, the, the panel, which is this panel here. So there, there they are there. The sphere example here is quite a nice one because this is actually a container. So that's why it shows up as a container. So if I just drag it on and I will have to just go back into perform mode there. Um, if, if I have a container, then the top level container is what will show up here. So if the tox is a container, it'll show up. So this one is a container with the sphere in. It then has an out one, which sends the visual to the mixer. It has a thumbnail called thumb, and it has a resolution set to, actually this one's set to 1280 by 720, so that should really be set to the monitor's resolution. Uh, in fact, I'll do that now. Uh, that should really be op.output.par.w, and the same for the height. Cool. So that's now going to the monitor's resolution. And it, this one also has a, um, an extension. And I want to run this reset every time it loads. So reset just basically does this. It, it essentially just slows down the period. It brings the period up and then brings the period down as it loads in. So actually, when I drag this visual even onto itself, you can see how it snaps there. That's it resetting itself to uh, to with using this extension. So as long as you have an extension with a function called reset with a capital R, it'll attempt to run that. And you can actually change that if you want something else. But at the moment, that's what it attempts to uh, to run. So that's the tox folder. So they all come in and they're all set up, ready to go into our mixer. So if I go inside the mixer, which is all set, all the logic for that is in base mix. In here, we have just selects with a fit and a cross and it eventually composites together left and right and it goes into this cross and then out to the uh, final output. So this has a, uh, an extension here which has set bank and the bank can be top left, top right, bottom left, the tox um, and it will try to run the extension and then it will fade in that uh, bank. It also has this unload function. So unload is called from up here. So what it does is it, it basically, um, when, when these have stopped animating, it unloads the one that, that was just animated out of. So if one was animated out of in here, so let's say I'm animating two A, once A is fully animated in and B is completely gone, then B will just be dereferenced to save, um, to save memory. Uh, there's probably some more memory saving to be done here, but that, that's for uh, a later release. Uh, BaseMix also has all of these parameters here. So all these parameters are completely usable. Um, they are actually referenced from the panel, from the control panel in real time. So if I drag my master fader to 0.2, it's now at 0.2. And if I drag it here, it's now, uh, that's because we're using GAL. So GAL allows you to, to do that. Uh, so I don't have to have any references here, they just hook up um, two-way. So that's the, uh, the way that works. Uh, and then that then goes into a add post component, which just does the mapping, really, at the moment. That's all it's doing. Uh, there's a little bit of um, optimization to be done here where I'm going to disable the stoner and feed it into a remap. Uh, there is a consequence of jagged edges with that, so maybe I don't know. We'll have to see if that's going to be good or not, um, but I will put it in there anyway. So if someone needs a, a more efficient show, they can run that. And then there's this level, which is the, that level is the, um, the enable output button at the top. So that's pretty simple. Uh, and then that goes to a final output and a container. And the container is using a, um, the second, the monitor's dat to figure out where the monitor is and then output into that monitor. So the entire project is outputting to the bounds 
So you can see here the UI goes onto the main, always goes onto the, the primary monitor. So if your primary monitor is your middle monitor, it will show up on your middle monitor. And this one will go onto whatever I set in the monitor, the output monitor. And that's the output secondary monitors. So your primary monitor will not show up in that list, but your secondary ones will. And then the third one, I have a third monitor here, I'm not using it at all, so that's just black. Uh, and then this will place itself, so if my monitors are in a weird configuration, it will always place itself in the correct place. Um, so the last things are save. Um, if you want to save, you can hit Control S, uh, that will save external toxes as well. So Control Alt S is kind of a way of making sure that all the things in here that are externalized don't get lost. On the top level outside is GAL. This is the standard version of GAL. There's been no modifications to it, so that's all very good. There will be a modification to the way that the menus work because the menus right now are too slow. Uh, this is not quite fast enough for what I need. Uh, bearing in mind that I have so many, so this will actually turn into probably a table dat or a table comp, sorry, or something that will make it, or a list comp that will make it a lot faster. Um, then inside also we have uh, an assets folder, uh, sorry, assets component where you can just put shared assets. So at the moment I just have an environment map in there. Um, there's the um, post talks is for future uh, post effects, which will be going into the base add post. So there's going to be, you'll be able to like add in things like my banana gram component or uh, some other, like maybe like a hue offset or something, whatever you want to do, you can put that into here. And then that's going to allow you to have your module loaded in, but then you can have output effects, which have go over everything. Um, so that'll be coming soon. Uh, then there's the container GUI which has the show and the stoner and the menu. And inside show, you've got all the different components. This is pretty self-explanatory. It's just panels uh, made using GAL. And I think that's pretty much it for the, um, yes, for the, for the whole project. So it's fairly straightforward. Um, it's just a case of, you know, loading in um, tox files, putting them to a mixer and spitting them back out and giving yourself a bit of control there as well. So if anybody wants to contribute or help, um, this is all on GitHub and you can make pull requests and you can flag issues if there's bugs. Um, there is a, there is a, um, a GitHub here, which is a simple mixer. Uh, that will, if you are gonna help, just please don't make a complete mess. Just make sure you name things properly. So I name most things have got um, the, op type in as the first part of the name all of the toxes are externalized into into the uh the lib uh, folder so if you do want to make any changes just stick to those sort of that convention and your pull request will probably be accepted um so uh, that's just the backup folder yeah but there and, and also the readme files that are in there as well so if anyone wants to help by adding stuff to that that's all fine um also, the tox files, currently there are a certain number of, I've, I have a, about what five in here, and I have a lot more which are being ported over from a very old system. So actually, if you're using these tox files, just be very wary that um, these are in T-Script mode. They're not from Touch Design 88, they're from Touch Design 77, um, except this one I think I built recently. But the rest, these ones are from very, these are from when I was like, 18 years old or something, they're from years ago. So um, if you're gonna put any expressions in these, uh, just be aware that they will be in T-Script mode. And I think that's pretty much it for how Simple Mixer works. So thanks. <laughs>